Hey guys, I um, just want to give you a couple uh, pretty cool testimonies. One to me, kind of, and one to somebody else, and some scriptures, and just ways you can help. Um, this is a little bit different video, but just hang, bear with me, okay, because that's why I put this one out there. Um, these are the two scriptures that I got. One was a while back. Uh, it's Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And the current situation of me, which is a testimony, um, I can actually cry when I say that. Um, because according to doctors, not good, most of it. But according to God, real good. Um, currently, and this is a testimony, about three weeks ago, I went to the hospital, went to the doctor, in the hole in my toe. I'm diabetic, so there's a little hole in my toe. Okay, it turned into an infection. They they gave me antibiotics. Two, two two doctors later, got worse. Third doctor, a wound care doctor. It's like, man, you would have died if you wouldn't have come in today. Blah blah blah. Um, we're gonna cut your toe. Your, you know, pretty much your toe, foot, leg. I'm like, dude. You know, I've been through this before. That was last year. And I hadn't caught it in time, that one. But by the time I caught it, my whole leg, all the way up to my hip, was cherry red. Fire engine red. Long story. But I prayed about it that night in the hospital. I was in the hospital three weeks. Prayed about it that night. The Lord said, tell him to get rid of the infection. Which I did. You know, I'm not knocking the doctors. They're trying, but, you know, some of them are in it for the money. Some of them are good doctors. And you know, I just had to get to the right doctor, the right hospital, the right doctor. So it was a three-week long journey. But they cut this much of my toe off. The first place, showed, the doctor showed up with a hacksaw and a bolt cutters, pretty much. Going to lose everything. Well, if you looked at my leg, and they would have cut, cut, cut my leg off below the neck. Seriously. But... So I survived that one. So then this one recently, and my toe hurts really bad now, but the infection has gone away. Cause they're putting in some pretty strong antibiotics. Probably need to go to the doctor again. I'm gonna take care of this one. Um, but I haven't been able to walk real good on it. And I've been pushing it. So the testimony is that I put it out on Facebook for prayer. Because guys, a lot of giants in the land in my land right now. My sword is a little dull. My faith isn't. I know God. All the scriptures. Man, there's, man, there's been some really good messages out of it. It's part of my testimony. But it's good news. So I'll get through this. But really, the main reason why I can't walk in my back is really jacked up, guys. I barely can stand. So that's why I'm saying, hey, come help. Um, but this is the cool testimony. I was a little discouraged about all this. I was like, man, God, it seems like I'm doing everything I can with the things you showed me to do. So it helps ministry. And that's how I got here somewhat. Because I spent too much time in the labor side of it on my foot. And it's created me some problems. But it wasn't for not listening to God. But it was Steve trying to do a lot of it myself. So now I was like, man, I just, so now what do I do, Lord? So he said, put this out there. So on his help, guys, show up. I had 27 warehouses full of junk. Good stuff and junk. Good, bad, and ugly. Some really nice furniture. Everything from a snap-on engine analyzer from the 70s car, antiques, car, car parts, nice stuff, tools, to just junk. I got 200 bags of clothes that got to be gone through. Garbage sacks full of clothes, guys. So it's like, man. But this is the testimony that encouraged me and just came through today. So this is what I'm saying. This is I'm asking for help, but it's not for me. It's unto because that's what I'm doing with this helps ministry. I just got, kind of got a little off. Um, 
Real quick back, background. Then I'll get into the testimony from somebody else. Between me and my wife, about six months, and I'm talking like no sleep. Like one o'clock in the morning, a couple hours, broken sleep all the time. I'm in so much pain. My wife was in so much pain. Both of us had some major issues. A couple of mine are even life threatening. That's why I said, when I say that, I'll taste and see that the Lord is good. I can really, really get to that. But so, um, let me go to the testimony, um, and then I'll go back to these scriptures, because there's two of them, actually. But in this testimony, and I don't think she'll mind at all, because she testified this to me. I got this call this morning from a friend of ours that runs Jesus Wept Prison Ministries. Look it up. She's in 48 states, guys. She's been doing it 35 years. Started out with one prisoner. Pretty, pretty sure she can go just about any prison she wants. State, local, federal. I'm all frail. Not frail, but small Pentecostal woman. We've been friends for, my wife and her have been friends for 40 years. I've known her for about 33 She's disciplined her testimony. Four guys, I wanted to give her a printer. She said she needed a printer. So I gave her one, I tested it. It was a nice printer, really. Three, she called me up, says a four, three or four, five hundred dollar printer. It was a nice printer. I tested it, it seemed to work. It didn't. She got ink, didn't work. And so, anyhow, this was the fourth printer. The third one I gave her, she asked for a Hewlett Packard. And then we're in these warehouses that I had. You know, that accumulated, so, <clears throat> for this ministry. So, it had about 60 ink cartridges and everything. Well, you know, I tested it, a friend of mine tested it, sort of, you know. Pretty smart, but, you know, it worked. But the problem was, which we didn't realize, was that the cartridges were expired. You know, kind of, I guess, kind of like food. So when you turn it on, it wouldn't print because the cartridges were expired. So we didn't, you know, we didn't have a computer and we didn't, you know, place to plug it in or anything in the warehouse. So we just tested everything. It seemed to work. She gets it home. It didn't work. Well, I gave her a really, really nice one. Probably a five, six hundred dollar, a really nice printer that I had. I brought two. This is how God works. The, the one she really wanted. And I just brought another one just in case, but it was a really nice printer. We tested it and it kind of worked. But she gets it and she tested it. The one with ink didn't work, so she said, so she went to the other one, and she had to go to the internet. She had to keep pressing, that's my message, she had to keep pressing. Went to the internet, had to get a cord for it. I had cords, but I had lost them, and long story, because that's why I need some help, because I've got too many things going on, too many irons in the fire. <clears throat> so, it worked, then it did, then it did, then it did. This is the end result. She called me this morning and said, for 35 years, she's been working on this ministry and she's been doing it very frugal, very budget friendly, not friendly, but on a low, low budget. She said she would go to church with ink on her hands, all over her hands, because she was trying to change the ink. She would have to do the New, she puts out newsletters to these prisoners, and they write back. So it's like their voice, guys. It's a pretty awesome ministry. They have no voice, but they do through her. And other prisoners read it. It's just a encur very encouraging ministry to people that don't get any encouragement. Because they just, like the homeless, man, they're just, they're felons. They're just, man, people, society just casts them aside like they're, Less than dirt, dog poo. So they, that's her voice, this newsletter. But she would have to make a colored copy, and then she'd have to go to a different printer, and make it black and white because she could. It was just, you know, I'm not. She's a very smart lady. She was a librarian. She was an executive um, assistant, but she was doing it on a very low budget. 
And so it was arduous at best. This was her testimony for 35 years. She said, but now, she said, this new printer, she finally figured it out, got on the internet, searched, did, did, did whatever she needed to do, different things. She said, what used to take her two weeks, nonstop pretty much, a lot of work, she does it in three days. Correlates, colors, both sides. She was having to do one side and then flip it. You know, I'm sure you guys know I'm talking about somewhat. So her testimony is press. And she pressed and I pressed and it was four. So it really encouraged me because like, man, God, that's all I wanted to do. And there's other ministries that I've helped, but I've had people come and get truckloads of stuff, trailer loads full of stuff, decent stuff. But I've been doing it by myself lately, guys, because the help I hired, it was just, there was just a lot of obstacles. And one of them was my health, really bad. Um, According to a neurosurgeon and some others, I shouldn't even be walking. And I'm moving around junk, heavy stuff, guys. I can barely walk up two steps. If you saw the stuff that I'm having to do, it's definitely by the grace of God. So I could use some help. That's why I can say, oh, taste and see. So if you want to become part of something, I want to become part of a cool testimony. I've got other ministries, another homeless one, another food shelter, food bank one, a different, different things that I'm trying to help with. A small scale, yes, of course, but I'm helping people. Want to be part of it? What I need is some labor. I'll trade you some labor. Come wear jeans and a t-shirt and come help. Any day this week, I've got... 20, had 27, I'm down to 16. Some of them are really, you know, fairly organized and some of them are a mess. I won't send you the messy ones unless you ask. But I'm willing to trade, barter, um, you can get whatever. I'm not really looking for an offering, guys, other than the labor side of it. But I'll trade you. I've got some, you know, I've got a really nice king size bedroom suit. Um, not the full suit, but the armoire and the bed. I've got some nice furniture. I've got some collectibles. I've got some tools, mostly hand tools, not in the big power tools. I've already gotten rid of a lot of them. Um, but, you know, i got a rigid vacuum. And, I mean, I've got some decent stuff, guys. Stuff that, you know, and my wife, man, we've got five grandkids. They don't have, they have any need for any clothes. We've been going through the clothes recently. So th there's some nice stuff in there, guys. There's also some junk. I'm not gonna lie and say that, you know, but I just need some help getting it out to the right people. So please come by and help. Message me, even if it's a couple hours, even if it's just come by and encourage me, even if it's just come by and buy, buy me a cup of coffee, tell me a scripture, whatever, pray about it, whatever the Lord tells you to do, I, I could really use some help. And you can become part of something because there's several other ministries once there's an area in Garland where we're starting to deal with some of the homeless people. Your treasures are going to be laid up in heaven on this one, guys. There's no pay involved in it. You're not, you know, they're not going to give you anything. God is. Jesus is. I could really use some help, guys. And my swords, and multiple swords, honestly, because there's multiple giants, demons have been Man, I'm battle weary, guys. Wore out physically, but that was a ploy of the devil. But I'm not discouraged. A little bit, yes, but not dismayed, not cast down. Because oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because according to the doctor's reports, man, I've been yelled at by doctors. I was going to die by more than one. I've been told by a neurosurgeon, I'm horrible results, moderate to severe brain loss. I'm like, what was that? And he showed me pictures, parts of my brain that had died. This was a couple of years ago. One of them was the balance. Like, okay, well, so what do I do? And they're like, well, there's nothing you can't do. It's not coming back. It's gone. Like, okay, God, I guess I don't need that part. Um, so 
I was, I'm, you know, not complaining. I don't like to do that. I'm not going to do that. Everybody's got some issues and problems. I just got a bunch of them right now. But want to be part of a testimony? Come help. Because this stuff is going out to the right ministries. I just take um, the labor on it. I've got to get rid of a bunch of this junk and get organized so that I can get it peeled down. Because those 27 store units, man, they were chewing me alive on the budget. And I'm trying to do it with myself. Now, I had some help, but long story, but a couple different messy people that I helped. Ended up kind of biting me in the behind a little bit. But I just need some help, guys. Because I've literally got I got one warehouse that's full of electronics. Well, I haven't even got to a lot of it. It's not all nice and new, some of it is. But I got a $3,000 phone system in there, if it works, from Cisco. And test it. I need some computer help. I've got so much office supplies that I could give to Jesus Wet Prison Ministry. She wanted to buy stuff. Guys, I'm telling you, I've got stuff that I want to give away to the right ministries so if you know somebody if you're a minister you want to just come by whatever this stuff has to go away because the labor is chewing out my budget really bad there's not much left for one and there's not much left to me physically too it's like okay lord a little help my wife laughs i'm like a little help here god she laughs I'm like no you don't understand i'm yelling at him I'm, I'm kind of like Larry the Cable Guy. I gotta get back into preaching, guys, in the ministry. I've got, wrote two books. They're out. I need some help getting more of a more amount. I got 27 more to write, guys. It's a long story. Man, how am I gonna do that? Do I look like an author? Do I look like a Nobel Prize winning man? A beard and a bald head and a Dollar Tree reading glasses? I don't think so. Do I look like a the nutty professor? Maybe, but I'm not a professor, guys. I'm not an author. But God has me doing that. I, I just need some help right now, guys. Come be part of this, even if it's just, to, like I said, to encourage me. Give me a scripture, whatever. I mean, a cup of coffee. Help me, you know, wear some jeans and a t-shirt and come help. Even if it's just for a few hours. Get a bunch of stuff, take it, whatever buy some of it whatever i'm just going to give it away anyhow probably most likely there's other ministries i'm trying to get involved with and help sort of you know i pray about a lot about it because i'm not going to be another soup kitchen guys but i am helping people small scale yes sort of but there's certain people and i've really helped and come be a part of it. And you can become part of this testimony. You can help Jesus Wet Prison Ministries by just helping me. I've got another one with my neighbor across the street. There's some food bent. There's just a lot going on, guys. But man, my foot out of commission and my back is really, really bad. Guys, I can't even walk. Literally, I'm like, man, I'm wondering if I'm even fall over. I got brain behind. Toe, legs, nerves, all kinds of issues. Plenty of them. Lots of bees. And they're not the bee attitudes out of Matthew. Might have an attitude, but I'll taste and see. And then this is the second scripture, and I'm going to end with this, guys. And about six months ago, my wife, man, between me and my wife, <laughs> recently, it's subsided some, but I keep her up all night. Because I'm in so much pain, no matter how I laid, slept, turned, tossed. I mean, I was jerking around. She said I'd be yelling all night long, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I'm cussing out, just call up. Man, I've been a, I'm not a wimp, guys, honestly. No, not even close. Pain. Lots and lots of it. So please come help, just with a little bit of labor, labor of love. You'll see, maybe you have a ministry, maybe you need some stuff. Let's just, and help me call through some of this stuff and get this level off. 
I already, God already gave me a plan. I just have to get it implemented. <clears throat> First two weeks in a row that we've got sleep, got, you know, about eight hours of sleep at night. You try not sleeping for months on end. You get a little bit out there, okay? So I'm, yeah, you no, know, I'm not blaming all that for some of the mistakes I've made, you know? Some of it been Stevie, okay? I get it. And I own up to those. But they all haven't been. Some of them have just been, I man, I was so out there. Terry was, too, my wife. This was a scripture that the Lord gave me for her about three months ago. And she was going through some stuff, too. Between the two of us, like, the enemy tried to take us out, literally. Still is. Still here. Because that's what God wants. That's his plan. But because I've got to press. But this was a scripture. I was praying, and the Lord said, when Terry wakes up, give her this, tell her to be of good cheer. This is a scripture. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. That's what it was. You know, be of good courage. Tell her to be of good, not cheer of good courage. I'm sorry. Be of good courage. He said, tell Terry to be of good courage. And so I did. And then we looked at the scripture. Be strong and of good courage, for the Lord's with you. Read it. 31 and 6. I had some awesome messages in these in this guys. The, the, this video would be too long if I told them. I just need some help getting them out. I need some help getting some of the stuff cleared off the deck. I need some help getting some of the stuff out to ministries. I'll end with this. Maybe almost two years ago, probably, a year and a half ago. I had a thousand, literally a thousand pairs of socks. Some of them were dirty, they needed to be washed, but I had this big box, and it was a, it was a um, dishwasher box. It's how big, it was a dishwasher box, an empty one, full of old underwear, not old, but, you know, underwear. Well, these came from different storages. Some of them I knew where they came from. Some of them were very nice. Some of them were clean, you know. Could have took, took them and gave them to anybody and they would have been fine. So, you know, I'm all the Lord said, I want you to clean those. Go through them and clean them. I'm like, Lord, I'm all up a size 52 underwear. Who wears a size 52 underwear? And I want you to clean them. It took me six, almost six, seven, five, six washing machines, those big commercial ones, full of them. Almost. 30 bucks and quarters and dishwasher soap, or not dishwasher soap, but laundry soap. I'm not gonna size 52 underwear. I'm a child of the king. This should be gold and silver. Why am I doing this, God? Complaining a little bit, praying. Thought I was, but complaining too. Why am I doing this, God? But okay, I did. Six months later, I got my answer. A homeless ministry came by and they were picking stuff up from me and they'd pick up some nice stuff. I'd go through it. I didn't give them junk, guys. The trash went away. It was nice stuff. Sellable in a thrift shop. Usable stuff. Cleaned. Organized. Put most of it by myself. I'm a child of the king. What am I doing digging through this dirty underwear? Six months later. Tell a lady, I was like, man, I was kind of embarrassed. I waited until her husband was there. I said, I got this box. It's, you know, I had dirty underwear, but I washed it. And I just got this big. The homeless people weren't getting that kind of stuff. They get clothes and shoes and stuff, but nobody thought about the underwear. Maybe that's an avenue we can approach. Get some of these places to donate brand new stuff. But anyhow, that's why I clean up. There's 500 pairs there. There's a lot of underwear. Child of the King. And I knew it, and I still know it. But I'm looking at their dirty underwear that I had to put gloves on because I was like, man, I know where some of this came from. It's not very sanitary, to say the least. But I did it, and I didn't know why. God does. So what I'm saying is, what is He telling you to do right now? Come help, guys. I really could use the help. Thank you for listening. Um, not so much to share, but right now, 
It's just, man, this labor is wearing me out. The reason why I grow a beard is because I didn't shave for about two weeks. I'm around so busy and just like, man, I'm so tired and exhausted. And it's like, man, I can't even pick up a razor to shave. And my wife's like, well, why don't you just grow a beard? You already got one. I'm like, okay. Didn't want to. I said, I will as long as you trim it up. Keep it trimmed. I said, because that's just not me. So, I got a beard. Lord knows what he's doing. But anyhow, pray about it, guys. I really could use some encouragement, some help. Um, you can come be part of it. There's two prison, another prison ministry I want to start working with. There's some homeless people. There's some neighbors. And just, there's just a lot. Small scale, yes, but we're really making an impact in some people's lives, certain people's lives. I'm very, very pointed and directed. And I'm not going to ask you to do something just uh, and make it feel bad and uh, you got to or whatever. You know, none of that. None of that, God. If you didn't pray about it, don't do it. Pray about it. What's God telling you to do? Come help me. Those of you that need to. Even if it's just one. Love you guys. Um, see you soon. Message me. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Love you guys. Um, be of good courage. You know, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because he's been good to me, guys. I still got the doctor report. My wife, when she read the doctor report about my back, she finally was laying on the desk, and I just I'd been going through some stuff, and I, I, mean, I didn't set out for her to see it. I just had forgotten about it. She came to me one day, and she was crying. She said, it really hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, honey. Really, 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 really hurts. But... I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why I could say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's been good to me, guys. Love you. Um, appreciate you. Come see me. You don't have to have a beard like me. Just come see me. Thanks. I love you guys. Uh, have a blessed, wonderful day. I hope to see some of y'all soon. Even, even if it's just to encourage me on Facebook or whatever. Just... Yeah, it's scripture, whatever. Whatever God's telling you to do. But first put it in prayer. Then we'll talk. After you pray about it. Love you guys.